Okay, chat, so we, we thought a little bit about our final thoughts. <laughs> I guess I'm ready to go. So, how do I feel about this game? In particular against, like, other PS1 era games. If you had asked me that in the first 12 hours of the game, I would have said that this would have been, like, an instant yes. I would recommend it. When we got to the last 13 or 14 hours of the game, I feel like it's a no. I like the ideas that are presented in this game. It has a fantastic soundtrack. There's a lot to enjoy with the game itself. But a lot of the problems come with like the mid game onwards. So it basically takes a concept of a turn based RPG uh, where every character has a unique gimmick. You have somebody that can cast spells and they can uh, rename spells and use their limited spell graphs or crest graphs or whatever they call them in order to form new spells by combining like a light and dark kind of element system if you want to think of it that way and overall it'll allow you to tailor yourself to be like a black mage or a white mage you have a character that's really good with guns so they have their ammo system and you can pay money to upgrade them for accuracy bullet count and power you have another character that's more of a traditional uh, kind of melee character. He's got a lot of katana s skills. Um, and it's kind of a balance of like tanky but powerful characters that are slow versus like mid speed versus like really fast but low melee damage. And the, the concept of using tools to advance in the dungeon is really nice. So you, you gather up to four per character and you can use them to clear dungeons, whether it's sending out the little mouse squirrel thing hanpan to go gather treasures across the gap grappling hooks bombs reversing time you know there's things that you could do in it that make the dungeon exploration a little more interesting and the first part of the game is about gathering the party members so you you see their starting stories and slowly gather them together into a party for you to advance and i think that part of the game was pretty strong i like being able to change perspectives uh, being able to share the inventory led to some interesting uh, workarounds for some of the difficulty spikes of those characters. But yeah, I do feel like roughly around the time you start getting access to travel options other than warps, which again feels weird that warps are the first travel option in this kind of game um, over other methods, but pretty much around the time we got the ship, uh, I feel like the game kind of lost its way, to be honest with you. We had like a mostly linear path to follow. Like we could do some side dungeons. We can, you know, bomb walls, find hidden passageways, find more items. And I think that part of the game was doing fine. It's just that a couple of points in the game, without going into plot reasons, the game is basically like, go figure out what to do. And it's not always clear what it wants you to do. I feel like one section in particular was very misleading. Like they're saying like, oh, we have to go to the Southeast, go to the Southeast. And the solution was to not go to the Southeast. And I'm like, why do you keep mentioning the Southeast if that's not where you want us to go? So that aside, I do feel like around the time you deal with the first batch of villains, it, it does just kind of meander and overstays its welcome at points. What goes into like a somewhat interesting dungeon design where you get to learn their tools, um, kind of go through like a light and dark area, for example, lighting lanterns. It just becomes what feels like a lot of busy work. Like, I, I feel like a non-plot explanation is when we had to go to like one of the memory temples and we were split up again and we just went in very long, expansive rooms that just required you, for example, to bomb over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in order to advance through them. Or like some of the later dungeon designs where you had to step on the Red X equivalency or it didn't want you to go fast. Or the ridiculous like looping of the dungeon where I think at one point in one of the dungeons we had to do complete like literally 360 routing through the dungeon where we start at one point have to hit something then go up then right then down then left then up then right then down then left and up and right and down then left over and over and over and that got really tedious 
And it's really unfortunate because I think like for the most part, the first half of the game was paced so well comparatively. The difficulty was about right all the way through. It wasn't like super hard, but you did at least have to like pay attention to spells. You unlock new mechanics to get advanced spells. You get something like the force meter. So that way you build up the equivalency of a super gauge per battle. And it resets if you die or if you uh, complete the battle and go to a new one. And that adds like another element and layer of strategy. But like, honestly, like the balance of the game just kind of fell apart at exactly the halfway point. I don't know if it was due to the advanced magic or the fact that there was so much optional content, quote unquote, that requires you to be high levels or like the weird force grinds in order to unlock all the bonus dungeons like you have to go to a very specific set of islands in order to get into one random encounter that might give you a key that you need for dungeons like there's just so many weird decisions halfway through the game and we're going to go into more detail in the spoiler section but i feel like that has to be in our prime discussion without going into plot reasons or anything else like just be aware that there's it, it loses the tightness of the difficulty and everything else about halfway into the game and i don't know if it's a specific thing of like plot and dungeon and difficulty but just be aware that uh, it was not a very enjoyable last half of the game. Welcome, Murphy. So I think from that perspective, I, I didn't, I don't feel one way or another the mix of the 2D and the 3D graphics. I think it's interesting. I think it makes it stand out for a game of its time. I think for the most part, the story has aged fine. Not all games we can say that about. Unfortunately, some of the RPGs are very slow and very basic. Uh, but this one had a lot going for it in terms of characterizations. Um, I can't say that I liked every character we came across, but they were mostly memorable. So I think from that perspective, my overall impression is I I'm somewhat curious what the later games are like. I know that this game got a modernization. Maybe it fixes some of the problems with combat, which I guess we could go into in the non-spoiler section. Let me tell you, escape and stealing are some of the most useless things I have ever seen in an RPG. I have never seen an escape fail so many times in a row. There's just a certain point in the game, I think we were like on average maybe seven or eight levels above what the dungeon would expect us to have, and we still couldn't escape worth a damn. Like at 10 attempts, we escaped once. It was so bad. It just like, it is no reason to be that bad. I'm sorry, rethink that, that is crazy. Yeah, that's steel mechanic. We literally killed a boss by doing our low damage steel move and the boss died by only taking steel damage before we stole once from the boss. That was horrendous horrendous what were they thinking and it's weird too because it's like it's the steel one in particular is useless 95 percent of the game it is not worth using at all pretty much at all until bonus dungeon the bonus islands for that super enemy that drops the keys arena fights that's it. There's three places in the whole game I think it might be worth using, and those are in like the final four hours of the game. <laughs> Every other point before then, garbage. What a waste of time. Terrible item drops. No, almost every boss didn't have an item. We had a lot of times where bosses basically didn't give us any money. We barely got XP from bosses. The XP system in this game is super whack. Let me tell you about this briefly. So we could fight a random rare enemy that's worth like three to four times than anything else in the dungeon, including the boss. And it's like, why even bother fighting half of the enemies in this game if they're just, if you could just make up all the XP in one encounter anyway. And I think that was a big problem. There were just some enemies that were just literally were not worth fighting. The XP was low. Like we're at one point we were just in casual overworld encounters that were better than something three dungeons after we got access to the overworld. Like that's crazy. Like I should not be getting like four and a half thousand in the overworld and then two thousand in, a, in a, a new dungeon that I have to go through the overworld to reach. That is just simply not acceptable. I'm sorry. I don't know what they did to balance the last half of the game, but it was whack. 
So I would hope if they, if we ever end up doing the remake, they fix that because that literally made no sense. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the spells that you can create are mostly useless or incredibly niche at best. Um, I did seem see, see some people hating on we. Well, we renamed the spells. I don't know what they're quite called. Uh, but the ability to do seven elements to a group of enemies, I think people just misunderstood how that worked. It is kind of unfortunate, for example, if you hit them with seven elements and they happen to be immune to one, they're immune to all of it, which I think does hamper its use a little bit. But at least being able to AoE early on with that did save us some time in combat, since again, we could barely escape combat. A lot of your options that you get to avoid combat are very late in the game, and some of them honestly were not worth using because they were just too expensive MP-wise, or they didn't last long enough to really justify it. So it felt like a kind of a slog, honestly, when you're really overleveled and you can literally one-shot every single enemy in a dungeon, including all of the enemies in one shot every single time and go first, to the point where it just gets kind of annoying to do those battles over and over again. So I think like the the steal the retreat mechanics and some of the spells kind of did a disservice to like what could have been a very interesting system. So a little bit unfortunate there, I would say. I also think that you get party heal kind of too late in the game, to be honest with you. I, I kind of wish there was like a, a stepping stone from single heal, which is not usually worth using over items until you're looking to conserve MP kind of thing. Well, unless you're looking to conserve items, excuse me. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know. There, there was, there were of like the, what is it? If it's a four by four grid and there's four of them, so you have 16 times four, that's what, 64, I think? Of like the 64 spells, like there were maybe eight or nine core ones. A lot of the times, like if you don't take that early teleport to get out of dungeons or the teleport to go to different towns, you are wasting so much time in this game, it's unreal. Like they, they will straight up leave you in like a seven seven floor deep dungeon and it'll be like hope you got the warp because we're not teleporting you out of here via cutscene get effed player <laughs> so i'm glad we we chose that very early as we were rewarded by not needing to backtrack for literally hours potentially in some of these dungeons with random battles so thankfully we avoided that um uh, but as i said before uh it, it has a somewhat interesting combat system of you know switching between the gun and everything else but I think a large issue with it is boss AI. Boss AI is so random and there seems to be no real rhyme or reason. I feel like tighter RPGs that even existed by the PS1 time really, really kind of embarrass this game as you get further in the game. Like it's one thing if there's like early bosses that are RNG, do you know what I mean? Like purely RNG. But to not like not have something where like a boss counters your buffs or purposely debuffs the party, or has like a certain set order and then we'll do certain amount of attacks into a big AoE leads to a lot of really wacky and unbalanced late game fights. Um, in particular, I think we saw on one boss rematch, the boss defended eight times in a row instead of attacking. So like just imagine like a party wide one shot ability because the game gets really stat checky as you get further in the game. Um, and then the second time you go to replay it, all he does is guard and chooses not to do the attack that kills you in the first place. So potentially you might not even see certain moves due to RNG, which is like really unbalanced from a difficulty perspective. And I'm really not sure why they left it like that, to be honest, which makes me a little sad. So I don't know, maybe if they had a slightly better set of buffs and debuff mechanics, I was definitely not a fan of things like defense down and response speed down not working on enemies. It's kind of a coin flip, whether it was worth using. And there's a lot of buffs that like barely give you any benefit and have like extremely big downsides like Berserk. Making you auto attack is such a terrible idea. It pretty much as soon as you're able to get it, it's still a bad idea. I don't know, chat. There's some very questionable, questionable things there. There's also missable super items that were just in a dungeon, like we arbitrarily got the ability whose 
uh spell is described as literally dot 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 question mark and doesn't tell you what it does we happened to use it in the right dungeon and found out what it did uh to get the super necronomicon book or whatever it's called for our magic character but like could you imagine if we went through the game and i didn't want to experiment at that exact moment like how bad the game would have been from like a healing perspective because some of those items felt like borderline mandatory that we ended up just lucking into randomly in the playthrough like oh if i didn't have this this would be over like holy it would be so bad for the party yeah and i think that's kind of the problem with it as i said before it doesn't it kind of loses its tightness once not even once the party gathers it's a little after that point but we'll uh I guess we'll leave it there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the non-spoiler section I really want to mention. As I said before, it's kind of a... It's an interesting thing to experience, but it's really hard to recommend this game. This is pretty much for, like, dedicated fans only kind of thing. Like, there's definitely an appeal to the game, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of really bad choices for games of that era. I'm just kind of looking for a little more complexity from, like, the bosses in particular. Like, I'll, I'll give a very basic example. Like, other than them, like, reacting to your buffs and debuffs, uh, something that they could have been doing other than having certain moves done every X turns as, like, a prep for, like, a big bad explosion move. Uh, it's pretty common to have, like, when low on health, trigger a new phase kind of things. There's not really, like, a counter mechanic from the bosses either. So, like, there weren't really bosses that ever punished me for meleeing, for example, even though we have other options. I don't know, chat. I, I feel like once you find one strategy, like eight hours in the game with the full party, you're basically not going to change that ever for the rest of the game. So it's kind of a shame of those 64 spells. Like we'll do AOE heal, curing status ailments, two or teleports, sometimes invisibility, one damage spell. Honestly, it's going beyond that's a stretch. I guess the thing that lets us insta-kill enemies? Question mark. And I guess uh, the, the Kirk++ plus plus multi-rainbow ability just to sometimes cheese encounters. Like honestly, you could probably win with even less than that. So yeah, I think from that perspective... There are mini-games throughout, they're just okay. They're, they're nothing to write home about. I'll, I'll note that they try to vary the gameplay a little bit, at least. So it's not just, like, strictly turn-based stuff, but... Just kind of went, eh, it's okay. Okay, chat, so I can't think of anything that I want to add in the non-spoiler section. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the plot in the spoiler section. I think from like a game pace wise, again, if they had modernized it a little bit, some of the animations just take forever and some moves are very, very, very inconsistent and slow. I'm very much an anti slash rave person. That ability was a waste of time, even at the end of the game with like max luck. What a, what a disappointing ability, chat. What an absolutely disappointing ability. It will sometimes do high damage. Most of the time it flubs and is not worth using. But anyway, let's go into spoilers, I guess. So, I guess from the perspective of bonus bosses, uh, the arena was like weirdly stacked in difficulty. I don't understand why like the second fight was the hardest fight of the arena. I feel like the fourth fight was a very light stat check, but much easier to deal with. So when we were meat shielding to prevent physical blows, it literally shut down the entire encounter. Yes, yeah, Floyarinos, welcome Dango. I feel a lot of the bonus bosses were just kind of BS. Like, I'm just gonna call it what it is. I don't really find it fun when, you know, we're fighting a boss, it's doing 500 damage, it's doing 500 damage, it's doing 500 damage, it's doing 500 damage, and then it's like, JK, I'm gonna do 3,200 randomly and kill you. And I'm like, what? Like, the damage range of the bonus bosses in particular is completely absurd. And I don't even mean, like, it will it will do that much damage consistently. Even that AoE nonsense damage is random. 
Yeah, like when we had the seventh moon spam or Monster Zed doing that stupid cleave attack. Yeah, like we'll we'll take like the damage range, I kid you not, was between 500 and like 3200. And it's like it is so hard to prepare for boss fights that are that wildly inconsistent in damage when your health total is like 3 or is like 2800 to maybe 3600 where I'm like am I randomly just going to die and it's not worth healing or should I heal? And it's just kind of one of those things, Chad. I just find myself really questioning the late game difficulty. And again, that's due to the pure RNG mechanic of it. If it had been like a build up to it, I think it would have been fine. If the boss consistently did it back to back, that would be fine. But it's, it's very jarring to go in a rematch and go like, oh, I could have beaten this on the rematch because the boss decided not to spam seven moon four times in a row and decided to only single attack and guard aka the attacks that don't do anything like it's just it's very weird to me that they left it like that yeah Dango saying, I understand hidden bots are supposed to be challenging, but random damage spike is stupid. Yeah, and that was the problem too. Like, remember when we were, I think it was in the arena battle, like the bonus bonus arena battle where the game is like, oh, we're just going to do 2,000 to you. And then we're going to do the same attack. And it's like, oh, that same attack is going to do almost 3,000 to you. Also, it's going to sleep the entire party. And I'm like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> Wait, that sleeps the party? So some of the, some of the lack of counterplay on that is kind of BS. Which is kind of annoying because like they give you some items to play around status ailments and like i understand that that's a classic jrpg thing like they'll suddenly hit you with status ailments but the problem with it too is there's certain characters that can't use those items to counter the boss right like think about it this way if you're if your magic score is not really high you cannot heal enough to survive seventh moon spam but you can't get through silence, paralysis, sleep without using an accessory. And the game makes you choose. Do you heal and get through maybe the occasional seventh moon? Or do you get immunity for when the boss spams abilities and you don't have any counterplay to it? It's just kind of like... I just kind of throw my hands in the air. Like, it doesn't really feel fair that even when you know what it is, just get frog medals. Yeah, Dango. That was really stupid. What a what a what a dumb hunt. I'm glad at the end of the game we decided to just take those uh, escape dolls and skip the final boss. The fact that that final bonus dungeon that we can enter did not have a save point through there, had a lot of really annoying grappling hook sections, had a stupid like guess the switch. I guess we had a radar or something for the platforms. The fact that it made us do all that and there's no save right before that boss and then the boss will be like, oh, I could do a thousand damage or five thousand die. <laughs> stupid. It's stupid. I'm glad we brought the equivalency of scape dolls into that fight. So that would have been an absolute waste of time. And that's what I'm talking about, too. A lot of the late game dungeons were so bad. What happened? I feel like it was a different dungeon designer. Like we had like save points before bosses. We had healing items kind of scattered throughout so we could pace ourselves and make sure we were healed before a big fight. Then the final dungeon is like, do you like going in circles a lot? I heard you like going in circles a lot. Do you want to go in more circles? How about a puzzle while going in circles? Oh, are you, are you trying to figure out where the real eye is? Why don't you go back and forth between these four rooms and cross-check which one is the real eye? It's just, it was so bad. Stealth, random stealth section in the game. I think by the time we got to the stealth section, I did get very annoyed with the game. So I, maybe the official point is when you deal with the quarter knights. When you're done with the quarter knights for the first time. I feel like the game took like a big nosedive in like dungeon quality between having to deal with like annoying bombable things and things that punish you for using the thing that lets you move fast by just dropping you to a pit. It's just like, it's just like, why? <laughs> Dango saying I have three buttons, two are nukes, unless you decide to hunt for an obscure item for a few hours, I guess you just get to die. Yeah, that bonus boss was so poorly designed. It, it is so unfair that the only option other than farming scape dolls by doing other bonus bosses 
is to literally just hunt one specific enemy in the bonus dungeon. And even then, the, the, the steal rate is so, so damn atrocious. It's so bad. I mean, how many tries did that take us at one point, chat? Like 15 or something attempts in a row for the second one or whatever? And the animation is not fast. It isn't like I hit it and then it's the next turn. It's like I gotta watch, jump forward, stupid little jumping animation, watch the thing jump back, then I swing, then I go backwards, then it pops up text, and then it continues. It's like a 10 second time waste. Or how about entering the bonus dungeon? Make sure this ends up in the final thoughts. Worst decision ever. Screw that bonus dungeon. Screw how, getting, how you're supposed to get in that bonus dungeon. You literally just repeatedly go back and forth in between a 22 second warp and you have to have low luck on the characters and it will arbitrarily take you to the bonus dungeon in which there are no saves. So heaven forbid you want to save getting the item you need to actually beat the bonus boss, which you wouldn't know about unless you look it up or you just happen to die the boss's absurd damage and you also happen to have been stealing and you also happen to be wearing the thing that will make you immune to it. Do you know what I mean, chat? Like, what a bad decision <laughs> that was down in terms of our stream playthrough so far i literally compared this game to tales of fantasia i felt like the game designers were just straight up trolling us and like not in a very teehee funny way either like that bonus dungeon start to finish i'm willing to put it down there i think it deserves to be in the same bottom five with thor from fantasia and uh game roulette from eternia Dango says, I missed how that happened. Yes, it is a random chance based off your luck of the character. You get an item if you beat a certain bonus boss to guarantee you of lower luck, but it is still not guaranteed you get into the dungeon. Even with that item, one of our attempts, I think, took 13 times. So that's 22 seconds times 13 of just trying to enter the stupid dungeon. Mind-bogglingly terrible decisions. I, I don't know what happened with the final dungeons. They're so bad. A lot of the bonus dungeons were really nothing to write home about. Other than like that true final bonus dungeon in the abyss. I know. Like it's one of those things where you're like, what happened? The first part of the game was fine. And then like that nonsense happens. Yeah, it's like it's like Vicky's oops all over again. Yeah, but imagine if Vicky's oops was required to go into a dungeon because <laughs> that's what it was. So I don't know, chat. It, it makes it kind of like really hard to replay because I just know how bad the last half of the game gets between like the really wonky difficulty spikes and, you know, the hard stat checks of some of the bonus bosses that were not really fun to fight due to the RNG of the AI. Um, I mean, once you get a couple of bonus bosses done, the, the rest of the game is officially too easy. So if you do complete the bonus dungeons, you are not even, like, remotely challenged. You're given one of the most broken items ever for beating the Abyss. The fact that it was, like, health regen, immunity to elements, 100 to all stats out of a possible 999 max. On top of a 1,000 health. Ridiculous. And it maxes your luck. Like, what a ridiculous item. So I guess it's, it's technically worth doing, but if you do that, the rest of the game is officially too easy. So I guess it's the double-edged sword for sure. I think from a plot standpoint, I like them gathering around for the most part in the first part of the game. I pretty much feel when the game told you you're on your own with the sailboat, I started to kind of feel at a loss with the game. And by the time we got to the quarter nights with the random stealth section that makes you sit through dialogue, a random fight, and then boots you back to the beginning of the room, I think at that point, I stopped enjoying the game the same way, where it felt like more like, I might as well as beat the game versus I want to see what happens next. There were some very weird villains, and I think some of them are very memorable. And I like the concept of seeing what the villains are doing throughout the plot, so I think that's good. I don't like some of the support characters that were introduced, like the L girl whose name I don't even remember. I don't really think was a worthy character to be in the, the thing. She's basically just a plot device. I didn't even really see her as a character, to be honest. I didn't even remember her name. I do remember Jane, though. Jane was terrible. I don't know if she's supposed to be funny. 
But yeah, she was definitely the worst character in the game. I think chat would agree. Hands down, worst character. Like, she even has the... Uh, she had, like, the, the, the valley girl, like, snobbery. You just feel it. You can feel it dripping from, like, every line that character said. If you had farmed far frog medals for your entire party, you'd never be able to lose. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's, like, so lopsided with some of the difficulties. Like, for, they could have balanced it a little better by having things that, like, half elemental damage, and that should have been a spell that you got to choose, rather than it randomly picking an element you have immunity to, which is terrible, terrible decisions. Um... Yeah, girl, girl sets the princess basically kind of falls off in terms of her things to do in dungeons. Like, she literally becomes, I put out fires, all my other tools are useless. <laughs> no joke, in the end of the game. She did, she did like, nothing in the final dungeons. They didn't even want to remotely pretend like they could think of any more puzzles involving her items. Right, chat? They full-on gave up. It was over. You just shake your head. The guitar as the final tool is a very bizarre choice for me as well. There's something, I guess. But yeah, definitely very disappointing going from somewhere around the time that you get advanced magics to the time that you defeat all the quarter knights for the first time. Remember to bomb your switches, not punch? Yeah, there were some weird choices. I don't know if I fully agreed with them. I feel like punch was super underutilized. I almost don't even understand why it was in the game, honestly. We used it in, like, three rooms total and one bonus boss. That was it. Right? Like, you use it the first time you get out. You need it to hit, get to the King of Illusions, and you need to push it in the final dungeon across the gap once. Am I forgetting any other uses? I don't remember when else- Oh! Oh, we had to punch the pillars to shake off an item, and that was the only time that we used that, to my knowledge, for the entire rest of the game. We did not need to do that to advance the plot. So... I don't know. I don't think they really made good use of the, the tools by the time they introduced them. So, very, 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 very questionable stuff, for sure. Uh, I definitely want to break before we go into Wild Arms 2. I think the high encounter rate mixed with no escapes definitely got on my nerves, especially in the final dungeon, where it purposely loops you over and over and over into that one room. And even with skate and stuff like that, it was still led to two encounters. It was so annoying. Um, I don't know, chat. Did I miss anything? Is there anything else we're talking about with Wild Arms? We mentioned the music. Music's good. Music, music is like a maybe an 8 or a 9 out of 10. It's pretty solid. I might listen to the soundtrack outside of the game itself kind of thing. But I think from like, as I said before, difficulty wise, the whole like... I guess the whole thing with the demons was... I guess they weren't really super interesting as villains, I guess. Like, they're just kind of like, uh, Mother is like, haha, I will destroy the world. And we're like, why? Haha, because I'm evil. She kind of had the worst motive of the bunch, and it's a shame she lasted so long. I did like that little horror scene where she basically consumes the other person. Where was the wild arm, pretty much. So, I don't know, chat. I don't have anything else to really say. I, it, it was just kind of like one of those things where... I, if it had been cleaned up a little more, this easily could have been like one of my favorite PS1 games. But man, it fell off hard after about the 12 hour mark. Super disappointing. So not enough to maybe dissuade me from continuing the series level of disappointing, but I, I would like to see them clean up abilities a little more. I'd like a little more balance with the accessories. I guess I never really talked about the runes. I feel like for the most part, the guardian mechanic was pointless. I think we used it twice in our entire playthrough to some effect. Otherwise, most of the time when I tried it in boss battles, it didn't do anything because <laughs> the, the boss was just immune to whatever the Guardian did. So, thank you, mostly useless mechanic. Right, chat? Round of applause to the Guardians. I used them maybe twice, didn't bother with them. Anywhere near the halfway mark of the game. And uh, I guess it was nice to be able to configure my stats a little bit. 
Chen saying Golem was best character, deserved better. I like being able to name spells. Plot was not clear at times, and that was stupid. Steel was useless. Guardians were amazingly useless. Yeah, the Guardians were pretty sad. Yeah, round of applause, chat. The Guardian mechanic. They literally could have removed it. It would not have impacted the playthrough even 1%. <laughs> Most of the time, it made the boss battle take longer. <laughs> it just didn't do anything. I don't know if they had, like, insta-kills or whatever they had. But I feel like it's kind of like a catch-22. Like, if you want to see what they do, you have to stall combat. But if you're stalling combat, then it means that you you could have cleared it faster and you don't need them. So I was just kind of like, so the only time I would maybe try them are boss battles. And it was like, well, guess you don't do anything useful. Bye. <laughs> Dumb. Oh, well, chat, maybe next time. So yeah, I would like to see if they keep this like tri-party mechanic in the future games. Yeah, Dango, I used them in the beginning of the game and the boss took zero damage on three different boss fights, I think. And I was like, yeah, I'm never using this again. <laughs> just just a waste of time. It's better just to debuff. They don't really do anything. Yeah, I think even before we got the boat, I stopped using them. And the boat was way before our last mode of transportation of that game. So that was definitely a choice by them for sure. So yeah, hopefully they keep the naming spell mechanic in the future series. I would like to see them give us actual options for escaping battles so it just doesn't become like a very boring grind fest. I'm hoping too that if they're going to require us to fight rare enemies to get things to beat bosses or to get keys in order to open all the treasure rooms in the game, I hope you actually get a mechanic to guarantee that they appear over other enemy types and or the combat is faster. I think those things really dragged down and made the game overstay its welcome. Just unfortunate. Anyway, Chad, I don't think I have too, too much else to say. I think we covered a lot of the, the issues, and about 60% of it was balancing around the combat. Engine summoning technical guardian comes in and be like, nah. I mean, it was pretty much like, wow, look at the power of the guardian. Oh, giant fire blast! Zero damage. <laughs> it's like so underwhelming. Yeah. I would say the last. The last time, I think, I think where the game started to specifically go awry, if I had to name a specific boss fight that I feel was not properly tuned, and from that point onward, most of the boss fights were terrible due to the boss AI and, and further, was when we fought Low Lilith, the golem that's right before Mother, and she had that AoE sleep. No, it was before Seventh Moon. That move was ridiculous. We got incredibly lucky we did not party wipe on that battle. That was after the horrible stealth section in the uh, sphere. I think that was like the specific moment in the game where I'm like, something is not, something is really wrong with the AI at this point where it just did not feel well. And definitely Seventh Moon. Chat will probably just be spamming Seventh Moon forever. <laughs> that was so stupid. That was one of the dumbest attacks we've ever seen. Although, Monster said spamming the 360 death move was also something. That was uh, a choice by the game designers, I guess. So yeah, let's, let's hope for tightening up of the boss mechanics. And hopefully a little better balancing of abilities so they're not just all like useless, unfortunately. But we'll see. Anyway, Chan, enough of a ramble. We went a little over time, I guess, with the final thoughts. So let's let's say goodbye formally to Wild Arms 1. So if you did watch the well, actually chat, if you have any other final thoughts, you have a minute or so, and I'll read them out. But otherwise I'm gonna begin the send-off. So I guess for those watching for the final thoughts, I don't have anything new to say. Maybe check out the soundtrack. The game, I don't know how relevant it is to the second or the third or the fourth or whatever to tell you if this is something you could skip. But we'll know by next time, I guess. Sam of the Boon says, Chad, bye, Wild Arms TM. So, so long for now. See you again in the next game. <laughs>